Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Before I introduce today's guest, who is back by popular demand with a brand new recipe she created just for this show, I'd like to thank everyone who has ordered my new book, the 10th anniversary edition of Unprocessed, which is different than the original version because there's 30 new recipes. All the recipes that could be updated to be lower in fat have been, and we have beautiful color photos photographs from Hannah Kaminsky and a brand new forward by Dr. John McDougall. If you order it or if you've already ordered it by Sunday, April 3rd at midnight Pacific time in the year 2022, we would love to send you as a thank you almost $100 worth of bonuses simply by emailing us your receipt or a screenshot of your receipt to chefajbonus at yahoo.com. Your bonuses will include three exclusive cooking classes that I did that are two hours long with a PDF of the recipes that I sell on my website for $25 each, plus the audio files of this book before it appears on Audible. Thank you so much for your support. And today we have an extraordinary plant-based chef. She's been on the show before. If you aren't familiar with her, I'll link to her in the show notes. You got to watch her YouTube video. Her nachos are just, oh my God, that was like, I just like, I'm craving nachos now. I shouldn't have watched that video right now because now I just, all I want is nachos, even though I have another lunch that was already pre-planned. But today she's going to be making, well, she says it's the best veggie burger and you can decide after you try it, the recipe will be in the show notes by the end of the show. By show notes, I mean just just look underneath the video on YouTube. You can't see show notes anywhere else. I know I also stream to Facebook and Twitter, but all the action happens on YouTube where we have the lively community chat and the show notes. Please welcome back Chef Julia Dunaway. Nice to see you again. Oh, thanks, Chef AJ. I just wanted to say while you were talking about your book that I just got mine in the mail. Oh, that is so kind of you. I'm reading it page by page. So I have it marked. I'm on I was born in Chicago in 1960, so it's really a good book, and well, I love I appreciate- reading about you. Thank you very much. That is very kind of you. Yeah, and I have the original one, too, but I like this one because you go in there and you talk about the ways that you can reduce some of the, the nuts and, you know, replace, you know, nuts with beans and cut back on dates or whatever. It's really good the way you have um, updated it. So I'm thank finding you. some good things in it. So thanks for having me on again. I really appreciate it. And, and you know, you learn as you grow, you know, they always say when you know better, you do better. And I didn't mm-hmm. know what I know. Yeah. Uh, what I knew 11 years ago, I didn't know then I what I did. I, well, you know, what I mean, I don't know yeah, what I'd like to fine. know is what I'm supposed to know in 10 years. I'd like to know mm-hmm. that right now, but yeah. that's not going to happen. So yeah, yeah, veggie burgers are so okay. popular. I, I love them too, because they freeze so well and you just mm-hmm. take them out of the freezer, pop them in the air fryer and you have a meal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get a lot of requests. The things that uh, the people that follow me, they're always asking for certain things. And one of the things I get asked a lot about, and this is the question over and over, do you have a good veggie burger recipe? Because apparently people try veggie burgers all the time and they don't like them. They think, eh, I, this was okay, but it was all like brown rice and beans and it was so dense and it just didn't have a lot of texture and flavor or something about it they just didn't like. So people are always telling me they've never found a veggie burger they really liked. So I thought I need to find a good one. Well, I went to a local vegan restaurant not too long ago and they had veggie burgers. And um, I talked to the chef and I said, can you make mine without oil? And she said, yes. Uh, And then I um, asked what was in it just because I was curious. And she said, mushrooms, chickpeas, and millet. I said, okay. So I ate the veggie burger and it was really good, but it was kind of salty. And I could tell they sauteed the vegetables that were in it in oil because I can always detect it. So I thought, oh, this, I can't come here and eat because it's not going to be good for me. So I thought, I thought I'll just, you know, try to make a replica of that burger. And I did, I made my own version. I added vegetables. I added some things to bind it together and I cooked it without oil in my air fryer. And I tasted it and I thought, now this is my favorite veggie burger because it's made with vegetables. It has a lot of vegetables in it. It's not so heavy on a lot of times there are too many beans and then it just tastes like a bean patty. So this one has some chickpeas, but it doesn't have any heavy, you know, bean taste to it. So it's, it's refreshing and it's good. And I've had to play around with it. I made it again a couple more times because you, I learned things too. Like I learned that millet once it's been sitting around for a while, it gets really dry. When I first tested my burgers, they were really moist. And then I tried to make them again 
and they were kind of dry. And it was because the millet that I had put in the freezer was not the same. So I've corrected that. And that was my recipe revision I sent you where I added some flax egg and a little bit of tapioca flour, or it could be oatmeal or oat flour. So I'm going to get my skillet heating up and I'm going to have my husband change the camera to show you what's going to be in the veggie burger. I have it set up over here. And what I, what I really like about it is the variety of vegetables because we're plant-based. And so many of the plant-based foods sometimes seem like they're plant-based, but they don't have any vegetables or any colorful ingredients. They're just made of kind of brown foods or foods that have been cooked to death. So I love the idea of, you know, if we're eating plant-based, let's eat some plants. I love it. You're putting the veggie back in veggie burger. Yes, exactly. So, you know, my veggie burger has mushrooms, zucchini, carrots, some onions, garlic, the millet, which is an ancient grain, which is really good. And then we can serve it when we get ready to eat it. You know, we don't have to serve it on a bun. We can serve it on a salad. And even like, I think Chef AJ, you mentioned in your burger demo, I watched yours the other day with your sweet potato burger and you were uh, wrapping it in big lettuce leaves. So I've got that as an option too, or it could just be salad leaves. We could just take, um, you know, some of this romaine and tear it into pieces and have it like a salad. And then I'll be making a sauce, which the sauce is made from some cashews that I've already, I've uh, taken the time to soak the cashews and process them to make my sauce because it's kind of boring to watch people put cashews in a Vitamix blender and blend it, you know, while you're watching. So I thought, ah, just get that done ahead of time. So anyway, that's the basis for my veggie burger. And I've already kind of cut everything up because just in the interest of time and standing here, I figure I could talk to you if I'm not busy cutting stuff up. So I'm going to throw my onions in the pan. I've got it heated up. It's just a nonstick skillet. It's a Calphalon, which is the brand I use. I've always had really good luck with it. Nothing sticks to it. I don't scratch it up because I'm really careful to only use wooden utensils. I don't put the metal spatula in here because I learned from uh, scratching up my last couple that uh, I shortened the life. And then plus, you know, you don't want the nonstick surface to have scratches in it. So I find that this, uh, this brand works for me. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start browning the onions. And one thing I do is I have a dry pan and I cook my onions in the dry pan and let them develop some color. Because what I find is if you don't let the onions kind of get some browning on them, they don't have as good of a flavor. So we're kind of going after this natural release of water and sugar in the vegetable creates some nice flavors. And we don't have to immediately add any liquid. Although we can, and eventually I will as things start to get dry, but I always teach in my classes, you know, let the flavor develop in your vegetables. Don't be afraid of heat on your vegetables. You don't want to burn them, but you know, you don't have to, uh, one mistake, or I think it's a mistake to me, but one thing I see when people cook their vegetables is they immediately throw in a whole bunch of water. And then what, what I see happening is it steams the vegetables instead of really you know, browning them a little bit and creating some flavor. So after a couple of minutes of the onions cooking, then I'll start adding some of the other vegetables. And Chef AJ, you mentioned my nachos. I think yeah, that's they look amazing. I made those at the State Fair of Texas. So um, that was hilarious because all these people were like, I made the big pile of those nachos and served them to and there was a, there were a lot of people at my demo. It's a celebrity chef stage. And I thought, you know, they see what you're going to make. So plant-based, whatever. I figured nobody at the State Fair of Texas where the most popular food is corny dog would come and see me make plant-based food. But all these people were in the audience and they were telling me how much they love the nachos and how some people said, oh, these taste better than the real thing. So I was very pleased with the with the um, reception I got for the nachos. That was, it surprised me. So hopefully they'll invite me back for another year. The year before when we had it, uh, we had it before COVID, I made a Korean tofu barbecue bowl, like a Korean marinade. And that, that was pretty good too on rice. Okay, so now this is cooked for a little while. I'm gonna add the mushrooms. And I add the mushrooms second because they tend to release some moisture. 
So I'm going to crank it up a little bit, get the mushrooms in here. And what we're going to do in this recipe is I'm cooking the vegetables until they're kind of soft for a few minutes. And then I add them to the rest of the ingredients, the millet and the chickpeas and the other stuff. So part of it is cooking the vegetables, making veggie burgers with a bunch of raw vegetables, which I have seen a lot of recipes for that. Usually the amount of time it takes to cook the veggie burger doesn't give the vegetables very much time to soften. So then you end up biting into it and you're tasting the taste of kind of raw onion. Well, that's not very pleasant to bite into something that you believe is cooked, but it's like a raw onion. So that's why I like to cook it up, get some flavor in it. I'm going to add my garlic. I have um, a couple of cloves of garlic, fresh garlic that I just cut with my knife. I don't use any kind of tools usually. I don't use a garlic press because, you know, I'm just fast with my knife, but I know some people like to use a microplane grater on their garlic or a garlic press, whatever you like to use. It doesn't matter. However you like to chop your stuff. I just chop the mushrooms by hand. I chop the onions by hand. I know that Chef AJ and other people have some little chopping blocks and things or um, chopping mechanisms they use. And those are great if you have them. With the uh, carrots and zucchini, which it's half a cup of carrots, half a cup of zucchini. It was half a cup of mushrooms, half a cup of onions easy to remember. Everything is like half a cup. So um, I used a just a like a grater, like a box grater on those things. Easy. So I'm going to add the carrots, the zucchini, which is shredded with the grater. And then I didn't uh, show you this, but this is a Texas size jalapeno. <laughs> so wow. I, I like I like spicy, a little spicy. It's these things tend to be kind of mild. They're not super spicy. If you like super spicy, you could put a serrano chili in there or some other super spicy pepper if you really wanted it spicy. I forgot my lid to the pot. Hey, Steve, could you bring me the lettuce that's in the other fridge in the salad spinner? Yeah. Thank goodness Steve is here. <laughs> he helped. He's so helpful in my Zoom classes because I'll be cooking like this and then I'll say, oh my gosh, I forgot something. And he, he sits over in the room with me and he answers all the chat questions. So now it's starting to get a little bit dry and I'm gonna pour in a little bit of vegetable stock. You see how it's kind of steaming up? It's because you know it's at a point where if I keep cooking it, I'm reducing the heat. If I keep cooking it, it might start burning. So now is when I add the vegetable stock. And we'll start adding some of the seasonings that I'm going to add to this, some of the spices. So, um, the, and the spices and the vegetables and all of this can, you can customize this to what you like. If you had some uh, summer squash or some other kind of vegetable you love or bell peppers or something else, you can feel free to substitute other things. You don't have to use just the things that I mentioned. These are just things that I thought in trying to recreate this burger I thought these were the flavors that I could taste in the vegetables I kind of I, I took the burger that was funny my husband got me another one a takeout one Set it back here. he got he went to the zonk burger there you got a glimpse of him I told him he should have dressed up but he didn't he's just wearing his t-shirt I had him go back to the burger place and get me a burger so I could dissect it and look at it to see what was in it and so I'm taking it apart going, well, that looks like zucchini. Well, it looks, and so I was just trying to figure out exactly what was in there. It was hard. It's hard to tell what's in food after it's been cooked. Half a teaspoon of ground cumin. Then half a teaspoon of paprika. I know a lot of you love smoked paprika. So if you love smoked paprika, go right ahead. I, I tend to have a little problem with it. Uh, to me, it tastes kind of strong. And, and if it's in something, it's kind of like it'll be all I can taste. And then I get kind of, uh, I don't really enjoy it because it's too strong for me. Uh, then we can put in a little cayenne pepper. And cayenne pepper is one of those things that a little goes a long way. So I'm just going to barely sprinkle some in. The other day when I made these, Steve made a comment that he could really taste the hot pepper. So I probably put too much in. So I kind of after that, I thought, well, I better not put so much in. 
Um, one time in culinary school, we were making some recipe and we had to quadruple the recipe and it called for cayenne pepper. And someone quadrupled the cayenne pepper. It was supposed to be like a half a teaspoon and they put like two teaspoons of cayenne pepper in there. And it made whatever we were making totally inedible. And our instructor said, well, you have to use your, your common sense. Things like cayenne pepper, you know, a little goes a long way, even when you're, um, you know, making the recipe bigger. I'm putting a half a teaspoon of tamari in here. This is a, a gluten-free tamari. And I use it a lot of times in place of soy sauce. I like the flavor. A little goes a long way. It tastes really good. It gives a richness to the food. And then, then for my no salt seasoning, I have Kirkland from Costco. And I got a big container of it for something. I can't remember what it was for a long time ago and decided that I kind of liked it. It doesn't have salt. It has all kinds of different herbs in it. And it tastes pretty good. I also like Trader Joe's 21 seasoning salute. So if that's one you have, you can use that one. Or, you know, Penzies and different spice companies, uh, Burlap and Barrel, I'm sure they all have their version of some kind of a, a no salt blend. That was a teaspoon. That was a full teaspoon of the, the no salt seasoning. So you can see my uh, mixture has cooked down. Oh, if you, if you hear something that sounds like snoring, my puppies, everybody who takes my classes, they know that I have puppies and the puppies we got, uh, we had two older boxers. We still have one. He's going to be 11 and our other boxer died in October. And we were so sad. He was like, for me, he was my soul dog. He was my, he followed me everywhere and he had big soulful brown eyes. And I was just totally, totally grief stricken when he died. He died a long cancer illness kind of death. So the people we got him from had puppies in uh, later in the year. So the end of November, we went and got a new boxer puppy. And she is now almost six months old. Well, a couple of months ago, we went and got another one from the same people. And it's a boy. So now we have a female and a male boxer puppy, four and six months old. And my life has been like raising babies again for the past four months. It's been sleepless nights, constantly cleaning up after them. And it's been crazy, but they're in the room over here and they're snoring. They've been out playing. So if you hear snoring, that's where it's coming from. I love dogs and boxers are like people. I'm turning my burner off because I can tell this has gotten cooked the way I want it to. It's softened, but it's not, it's not cooked to the point where it's mushy. It's just softened. And I'm going to add a fourth of a cup of very finely chopped walnuts. So I've chopped them really small. Uh, in, the, in the burger at this place in Fort Worth, they use cashews. And um, I don't wanna use cashews in my burger because my son lives with us and he's allergic to cashews. Oh. So I just, I always have walnuts around because I use them in my, sometimes on my oatmeal and in different recipes. So I substituted walnuts for cashews. And then the other thing is I put in a tablespoon of tahini because I found that this could be a really dry burger. And so the tahini kind of, oops, the, the tahini that squirted out of my bottle, instead of into my spoon, I found that the tahini kind of helped it kind of stick together. So this tahini I use a lot, it's called Mighty Sesame Tahini. And it, what I like about it is it's pourable. So um, you shake it and you can just pour it right out and it's very fluid. And in my other tahini, a lot of times you have to stir it forever and it kind of gets hard, but this stays very moist and, and liquid-like. So I kind of like that. You know, right, I, so. I, Julia, I, I have a natural milk machine and I make my own tahini because I was, it, it's so expensive. Yes, yes. I've heard about your natural milk machine and I've been thinking, you know, I, I'm starting to look more at the labels of things and my almond milk that I like, it has all these different ingredients and you know, I'm thinking in my soy milk, I'm looking at all the ingredients thinking, I need to start making some of this on my own. So I'm, I'm exploring the idea at this point. I haven't done it yet, but I need to look at that. How hard is it to make something like almond milk? 
Oh, yeah, it's, it's, milk. It's, it's very easy. And I have some videos on my channel, but like the, I couldn't believe how easy the tahini was. You'd literally put mm -hmm. the sesame seeds in and push the button mm -hmm. and it's done. Wow. Be because, you know, the raw tahini is quite expensive, mm -hmm. uh, really. Like it's, I've seen it for $20 or more a jar. And mm -hmm. a lot of times the expiration date is not very good on the raw mm -hmm. one. And right. Just, I got, I just, it's just really mm, easy to make. Good. I'll, up, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. That's good to know. Yep. Okay. Um, so I'm going to put this mixture in a bowl and then I can add the other thing. So I've got my vegetable mixture in a bowl. Get that out of the way. And then I have to add my chickpeas. So I've got my food processor over here. So Steve is gonna put the camera over there and I wanna talk about the chickpeas. Um, you know, you can always use canned chickpeas. I'm, I'm not using them today, but um, this one is organic and no sodium and all that. That's the kind I would get. And Trader Joe's also has a pretty good um, chickpeas that I have bought before. They call them garbanzo beans. I think I'm your can. But today I'm using Rancho Gordo garbanzo beans. And I don't, I'm sure there are probably some Rancho Gordo bean club members watching because that's a big popular thing. And I use a lot of their products because I do eat the Daily Dozen according to Dr. Greger, how not to die. Uh, the, the plan I follow, of course, is whole food, plant-based, no oil, but I follow the daily dozen checklist every day. And that is three servings of beans, which is a half a cup each or chickpeas or edamame or tofu or some kind of bean product. So I do eat a lot of beans and following the whole food, plant-based, no oil, daily dozen way of eating was what helped me get my weight off and keep it off now. Since um, I started doing this very strictly in May of 2020, I just told myself it was kind of ridiculous that I was a plant-based chef and could cook anything in the world. And here I was overweight, you know, and teaching all these people how to cook this healthy food. And I was at that time, I was a little over 20 pounds overweight. I'd already lost about 10 pounds, but that 20 pounds wasn't going anywhere. So I'm going to put a cup and a half of garbanzo beans in my food processor. Huh? Oh, these um, garbanzo beans are cooked and I soak them for 24 hours and then cook them in the instant pot. This is only, I don't use the instant pot a lot but I do use the Instant Pot for my garbanzo beans for hummus and other things. I usually cook the beans on the stove top because I work from home and it's not that hard for me to do it. So um, anyway, uh, my story about losing my weight is after I started eating whole food, plant-based, no oil and really strictly following it in May of 2020, I finally lost that extra 20 pounds. And so I've kept it off now since probably January of last year is by the time I got it all off. It was January, February of last year. I have kept it off, which I know that to some of you may think, well, that's not very much and that's not a big deal. But for me, all my life, I've been overweight, uh, at least by 20 pounds, but a lot of times more. There are times I weighed, you know, close to 200 pounds. So for me to get that weight off and keep it off all this time, 18 months, is a big deal for me because, you know, every other time, every other diet I was on, I would always gain the weight back. As soon as I, as soon as the diet was over, then I would start eating again and gain it all back. But I haven't done that this time because I'm not changing what I eat. I'm not going back to anything. I'm sticking with this because I really like it. And uh, it's been, you know, wonderful for my health. Okay. So I've got my garbanzo beans in here and I'm going to pulse this, but I'm only going to pulse it about five or six times. I'm not going to grind these up until they turn into hummus. You know, you mentioned your husband detected when it was a little bit extra spiciness in the burger. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing I always say to people like too much salt and too much heat, it's hard to, do you find it's hard to correct it if, if you have done that? Yeah. Um, you know, once you've put it in there, it's hard to disguise it, especially cayenne pepper. And if like sometimes people will put too much black pepper or something in their soup or cayenne pepper or any pepper, and they try to go in there and correct it, but it doesn't work. Here's how the chickpea should look after your five or six or seven pulses. They should be 
you could still recognize them as some kind of being or something. They don't, you know, they're not crushed to the point where they're pureed, but you don't want to see a lot of whole beans in there because you don't, it's not going to form into a burger if there's big chunks of whole chickpeas in here. So then I'm just going to mix this up and add my half a cup of millet. And I cooked the millet earlier and I, I have the instructions in the show notes. I put two and a fourth cups of water and um, one cup of millet. Millet is the ancient grain. I have some organic milled organic hold millet that I bought. I use this Anthony, Anthony's goods, but I really liked it though. I hadn't really made millet a lot because it's not something that most of us are that familiar with growing up. I grew up in a Japanese American household and we ate rice nearly every day. So millet, the only time I heard of millet, and this is a terrible story, but a friend of the family had been in a a prison camp in Korea during the war and um, he almost starved to death and the only thing they gave him to eat was millet and he would tell us about it and he would say they only fed us millet and millet is bird seed so I always thought millet was not for human consumption and so I never tried it but it's actually pretty good okay tapioca starch or flour two tablespoons and that is because um, the first time I made this, I didn't use this and it worked fine because my millet was freshly cooked and it was really soft. But then when I made it again with the frozen millet that had been made previously, but was in the freezer, then the millet was real dry because <clears throat> as it cools, it gets kind of dry. And this is flax meal. It's ground flax meal that I've had soaking in three tablespoons of water. So one tablespoon of flax, ground flax seed soaked in three tablespoons of water. And then you get a nice um, flax egg because we really need, need something to bind all this together. Otherwise it's gonna be, it's not gonna stick together. And so I found that out, you know, after making it a couple more times. So now I think I've got the recipe. <laughs> down pat after trial and error. Okay, I think I've got everything in here. I've got the spices. I have the millet. I have the all the different vegetables, the walnuts, and everything's in here. Oh, some freshly ground black pepper. I'm not going to add salt. There's no need to add salt, but it is in my recipe because, you know, salt is popular and a lot of people just starting out will add salt to their food. And a lot of people that follow me are people that are new to plant-based eating. They find me on my um, Facebook page or Forks Over Knives. Sometimes I post on there a lot. People will find me on there and then, you know, they're brand new to this and they have families and they're looking for things that people will eat in their household and not get upset because sadly, early on when people are introduced to plant-based food, they don't, a lot of people don't think it tastes very good. Uh, and unfortunately, oftentimes it's the men. I shouldn't, shouldn't say that, but Steve is a good test subject. There are lots of things that I like that he doesn't like that I think, oh, this is delicious. And he's like, no, I don't really like that. And I've heard the same thing from a lot of my clients is that their husbands are a lot pickier than they are about what to eat. So I'm using a half a cup measuring cup and they're, they're gonna be a half a cup. And I'm just going to take this parchment line sheet and plonk them down on here. And then I'll flatten them out here in a minute. So things like um, veggie loaf, burger, those things are very popular because they are similar to stuff that people are familiar with and they already eat because they're used to eating sandwiches, um, you know, meatloaf and gravy and stuff. So <clears throat> I have a good recipe on my YouTube channel called veggie loaf that's more recent. I've got a couple, but more, the more recent one is made with lentils and I think it's delicious. And I like to serve it with my plant-based mashed potatoes and I have a really good gravy recipe also on my YouTube channel. So those are the recipes that I, I teach people and they'll tell me that somebody in their family that really didn't like plant-based food after they tasted that, they said, oh, I like this. So burgers are one of those things that you know, people enjoy 
something that is similar to what they're eating, like Steve will eat the veggie burger on a bun, a Dave's 21 grain bun. This made five. Sometimes it only makes four. It depends on how generous you are with the, the uh, vegetables and everything. So then I just press it down and turn it into the shape of a burger patty and kind of form the sides as I'm going. I love that you're using millet. I think millet's delicious and I think it's an underused grain. Mm -hmm. it, and I think it would taste good. Like, you know, my leftover millet here, you know, you can use it. Like I, I eat a lot of rice, but I'm looking at this thinking, well, I'll, I'll make my master fried rice and just use this in place of the brown rice. And it tastes really good or um, it's good in a porridge. I have used it to make breakfast porridge where I take steel cut oats and millet and mix the two together and cook it, you know, and make kind of a, a breakfast porridge. And then you can add whatever you want, savory or sweet. I usually add like blueberries and walnuts or whatever, you know, and make it more sweet. Dates, I'm using Another thing that I'm doing more that I didn't do before is I'm trying to get rid of any sugar except for dates, which has been hard for me because I'm one of those people that was always using a lot of turbinado sugar and, you know, um, cane sugar thinking, oh, this is fine. This is fine. And then the more I'm learning about the role of sugar and caffeine and some of the things, you know, it's like, no, nah, I don't really need that. I can, I can live without it. I got to rinse my hands off. And my uh, taste buds have changed a lot over the past, especially the couple years since I've been a lot stricter. Yeah, I've been eating plant-based since 2017, but not so strictly until this last couple of years. And so, um, you know, my taste buds keep changing and they're a lot better now with not needing the sweetness from syrup, maple syrup and stuff. And so now I have tons of date lady syrup and I've ordered... Uh, in fact, it should be, it's on, it's in the mail. I have um, 10 pounds each of medjool dates, one bulk and one soft from the date people in California. And I've ordered dates from them before and they're just awesome. They're so good. Okay, so the burgers are made. Then what I do is I put them in the refrigerator and let them chill for 30 minutes because, and I have some that I've already done that with, we're gonna have a lot of veggie burgers in the fridge, in the freezer, because they'll, they'll hold their shape better. You know, like sometimes before you put them in the fridge to chill for a while, they're a little soft, because remember, this millet is kind of dry and there's not a lot in here that's moist. It's not like the old veggie burgers that have tons of starchy beans that, that stick together. This kind of stuff does not stick together all that well. So to make up for that, chilling it, will make it stick together really well. So then what I can do now is I have my air fryer and I have the Cuisinart model and I really love it. I've used this thing. It's probably gonna break down one of these days cause I use it so much, but I like that it has this tray like this. It's a mesh tray and you know, there's good airflow but I can look into the air fryer and see the food cooking, which I really like. So I'm gonna lay these burger patties on here. And by chilling them, they're staying together pretty well. And I think I can get all five on here. Gotta move one a little bit. And this one made five as well, but you know, it's food. It's not always exact because one recipe I only made four, so. Four to five is what you end up getting out of this. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these in the air fryer and they only take about six minutes, but I've already got some made. So I'm putting it on 375 and I'm gonna set my timer here because I'll never remember when my time is up if I don't set it. So, um, that's going to cook, but I've got some that are already made that we can plate up as soon as I make the sauce, because I know it's hard to get all this stuff made while we're filming. So do you have to have a sauce for this dish. No, you don't have to have a sauce. But one of the things in the burger or at the place that I liked was uh, they had something called special sauce, and it was a cashew-based sauce, and it was really good. I don't know what was in it, but 
like I said, I tasted it and thought, okay, I detect lemon, I detect something salty, I detect something spicy, I detect some garlic. So what I did was I, I made my own little version of it. And it's funny because um, one of my clients, I, I do private coaching. So I have, I take about four people every 12 weeks and I do a 12 week program with them where I meet with them individually one hour a week. And then we have a group meeting once a week. And with one, one of my clients, what we're doing, because she was more interested in learning how to make food. She was kind of like a person that didn't cook. She said, well, I really want to use my hour with you and cook food. So I said, okay, that's fine. So we meet here in my classroom kitchen and cook together. And so we made um, this yesterday or Thursday or Friday, Friday. And, um, you know, we made this, this sauce and she said, this sauce is the best thing I've ever tasted for like a salad dressing. <laughs> so she decided that was going to be her salad dressing. Okay, so I put a clove of garlic in here, then some lemon. I'm gonna put um, two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. This is a really generous half of the lemon and it's about two tablespoons. I'm not gonna measure it because I know how much juice is in a lemon and that's about what I want. And then I'm going to add some sriracha. Now this sriracha that I'm using is organic. It doesn't have any weird dyes or colorings. It's all made from dates, garlic, raisins, tangerine juice. I love it because I used to use the, the traditional sriracha. And, you know, I started looking at the ingredients and part of the ingredients, I think I remember had like different kinds of dyes. <laughs> I thought, I'm not supposed to be having that. That's, that can't be good. So I kind of gave up on the old fashioned sriracha that I used to always have a ton of in my fridge. And then the other thing is miso. So this is white miso. And um, I'm only going to use a teaspoon. And this miso has 310 milligrams of sodium for two teaspoons. So what is that 155 for uh, one teaspoon. So it people a lot of times I've some of my uh, followers and clients and people will say, Oh, I can't have miso, it's super high in sodium. And I'll tell them, well, you know, miso has such um, positive properties that really, you know, miso is not a bad way to get something that has a saltier taste if you use it sparingly. And so I think it's okay to use small amounts of miso. And I noticed, Chef AJ, in your book, you talked about miso as having so much less sodium per, per teaspoon, like 2,300 milligrams of teaspoon uh, per teaspoon of salt versus 105, 100, what did I say? 155 for this miso. And yeah, the miso, it's so much, so much less. If you're going to yeah, use yeah. salt, miso or, or cocoa aminos, that's mm -hmm. my recommendation. Yeah. So, I just want to let you know, Peggy says she can't wait to make the recipe. Julie says she's okay. already made it and loved it. Okay. And you know, oh, if you have time, I'd love for you. I was listening to a podcast you did uh, with Plant Based Dallas, and that you, I can't believe you worked in a prison. I did, yes. How many years? 21 years. Were you so, a guard? No. Um, for 33 years, I was a clinical social worker. And my job with the Bureau, Federal Bureau of Prisons was I was the chief social worker for the entire nation. And I worked out of the local prison. It was a federal prison for women. So my job was administrative and also clinical. And so I, my, my department, we had a lot of social workers and my department was very popular because we helped people. The women in the prison, there were 1,400 women, they came to prison and they were really, really, some of them were really very sad. And they, they had to leave their families, their children. They were involved in activities that they may not have realized would lead to 10 years in federal prison because their system is very, very unforgiving. If you don't know you're doing something wrong, it's, you know, it's kind of like, well, too bad, you should have known. So there were people in there, older people that had never been in trouble a day in their lives. It was really sad. And so they would come to my department and we would be helpful. We would say, okay, well, we'll try to figure out how to help you navigate the system or cope with being here. We had groups, we had activities and we were really um, a valuable asset to the prison system and also help with 
with release planning and discharge planning, because when people get ready to go home after being in prison, there's a whole other thing about what are you going to do? Where are you going to work? How are you going to get a job? Where are you going to live? So there was all that too. So that's what social workers do in the prison system. And that's what I did for 21 years. Wow. So what did you, what, what was the food like there? Did you happen to notice? I, or did you eat there? Did you bring your lunch? I didn't eat there um, just because, you know, most of us didn't eat the prison food, but it was good. You know, it wasn't bad. Um, they had a really big food service operation in the, uh, in the prison and they made, you know, they published a menu and, you know, the food actually looked pretty appetizing. And a lot of my friends did eat there. So there wasn't anything wrong with the food. Of course, there's a lot of horror stories about prison food, you know, that um, if the prisoner's mad at you, they might spit in the food or something. So I just want to show you the burgers and I'm going to go ahead and plate some up and we'll just leave these alone. But you know, look at how golden brown and pretty the burgers look. Once this is six minutes at 375. And then what I'll do, I'll do this later because I've already got some cooked. I turn them over and cook them for another four or five minutes. And if they look like they're getting too brown, I'll turn the air fryer down to like 350 and cook them. I think in my instructions, I say to cook them for five to seven, oh, um, six minutes, and then turn them over and cook for five to seven more minutes. So you know, it just, people have different temperatures in their air fryer. Not everybody's air fryer is the same. So I would just say, based on what you know of the type of air fryer you're using, you don't want them to get burnt or overly brown. So I've got some over here that are already done that I cooked earlier. And this is how they ended up looking after cooking the full amount of time. They, they get nice and brown. I like them to be, you know, brown, but you know, if you look at the other ones, they're kind of more golden. If that's the way you like them, remember everything in there is already cooked. It's cooked chickpeas, cooked millet, cooked vegetables. You could just, you know, take this whole mixture and heat it up in a skillet and put it over your rice and it would be a meal, just, you know, the ingredients for the burger, which I kind of like that too. Okay, so what are we going to do with this burger? Uh, a lot of people are not eating things in bread you know, just because, you know, flour is not something I got to, this is my plate, <laughs> wipe it off a little. You know, there are people there, I've turned my timer off. Um, you know, bread is not that popular for a lot of people. We could, you can use um, Dave's 21 grain bread that does not have uh, oil in it, or I think some Ezekiel bread. So if you wanted to make this into a regular burger, you could, but uh, you know, a lot of the people I work with, they're not, they don't want to eat a lot of bread because in the daily dozen, we eat three servings of grains a day, half cup servings and a bread. One slice of bread is one of our grain servings. So then if you take away your grain servings by having a sandwich, to me, that's kind of not very satisfying. There's not a lot of volume in a piece of bread, is there, AJ? Well, no, and it's, it, it lacks the water, so you're not going right. to get full. You know, somebody's asking Chef Julia, if they didn't have an air fryer, how would you cook the burgers in a regular oven? Okay, um, I think I had alternately placed on a parchment lined baking sheet at 400 for 20 minutes, turning halfway through. So you don't have to have an air fryer. Okay, so I've got my plate lined with romaine lettuce, or like I said earlier, you could use a whole piece of lettuce and make like a, a you know, lettuce wrap with it. But for now, we're just going to have a plate with a bed of lettuce, and then we're going to put our veggie burger on it. This is my veggie burger salad. I had one, I think last night. And then like I have all these great vegetables. I have these wonderful tomatoes that I'll put a few on here. And I'm just going to put my vegetables on the side. And then what I do is I put the sauce on it and cut everything up as I eat it. Um, you know, pickles are a thing that we have to be kind of careful with because pickles are really high in sodium. So instead of pickles, I have some cucumber slices, but I also have pickles on my plate because these are cucumbers from my garden. And every year in the summertime, I grow tons of cucumbers and make pickles with my garden jalapenos and pickles. And I have jars and jars of these pickles. So I'm going to go ahead and use just a little bit. So, you know, instead of covering it with a mountain of pickles, I'm just using a couple little slices. And um, 
you know, those pickles are not the world's healthiest thing, like I said, because you do use salt when you make pickles. There's no way around having pickles that don't have some amount of salt. Maybe there are, but if you go in the grocery store and look at pickle jars, they have a lot of salt. There's just well, store, store bought for sure, but you can make them without salt. Chef Ramses Bravo at, at True North does, and oh, yeah? I, I'm without salt. Yeah. What does he put in there? I don't know what his recipe is, but I use the California balsamic vinegars and they, oh, okay. hey, they, well, they're great. I'll try it. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I'll try, yeah. this year, I'll try that with my cucumbers. Okay. So um, here's some avocado. Which I Anne think. wants to know your recommendation for your best food processor. Well, uh, mine is a Cuisinart and it's not a, even a huge one. It's like a, I think it's a four or five cup. I don't see the, the, uh, the jar, but it's not very big. Oh, it's in the sink. But yeah, um, I have two Cuisinart food processors. So I have like an eight cup and then I have this four cup and I use the small one a lot more often because, you know, the other one is really big. I don't usually have to food process that much food. So this is my burger salad. And then I've got the sauce, the special sauce. We can kind of put that across the top. And it tastes good without the sauce, so we don't have to put sauce on it. But, you know, I, I like the sauce. And that, that's it. That's the veggie burger salad. And the veggie burger freezes well. And what I did to reheat it was I would put it in the oven or in the microwave, you know, for 30 seconds, which works pretty. It's like a quick and easy way to do it. But you can also put it in the oven and reheat it at say 350 and just kind of keep an eye on it and reheat it in the oven. Or a lot of times I reheat stuff in a skillet. I just put the, the food in the dry skillet, put it on medium heat, and then I'll add just a little bit of water or something that creates some steam. And then you can reheat it that way as well. So, you know, that works too, but um, they keep in the refrigerator for about four days. And then in the freezer, you know, I don't, I don't think most frozen food like this tastes good after a couple of months, maybe, you know, two months at the most. And then it starts having that kind of been frozen too long kind of a taste. But, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good burger. And if you don't like chickpeas, you can substitute black beans or pinto beans or white beans. You don't have to use chickpeas. That just happened to be the selection that I made, but any beans can be used at just a cup and a half of whatever beans. And really you could use any grain, like if you didn't have millet. So with my client on Thursday, she didn't have any millet. So she had brown rice. And so we used brown rice in hers. So, and that worked out fine. It, it tasted fine. So it just depends on what you like and what you have. But I think this is a, a veggie burger in the sense of there are vegetables in the burger all these different vegetables. And it doesn't taste like a, you know, like, oh, I have to eat this because it's healthy. It tastes like, hmm, this is really good. I'm enjoying this, which I think is a big asset to any of our food. If we can make the food taste really good, people will want to eat the way we eat. And with the minority of people in our country eating whole food, plant-based, no oil, I think it's really great if we can make things that other people would enjoy along with us. And that way we can bring people along and encourage them to eat this way too. I agree. And your food does that. You have some incredible recipes on your YouTube channel, which I'll link below in the show notes. I've just added the recipe to the show notes. Jerry asked, what flavor vinegar do I use for the pickles that have no salt? I use the dill mustard from California balsamic oh. or the hmm. red onion. And hmm. I had the recipe on my YouTube channel. And basically you can just, yeah, I mean, it tastes like pickles, you know? I've got that one. Ruby red onion. Yeah. It, I, okay. And I do marinated onions too. Cause I love just yeah. putting a thinly sliced red mm -hmm. or white or sweet onion in the vinegar. And mm -hmm. you can even, because you can even add a little bit of apple cider or another yeah. flavor vinegar too, just yeah. to, to extend it. And you can keep reusing mm -hmm. the vinegar and it's just, they're so delicious on a burger or a salad, mm -hmm. the marinated onions. Yeah. I'll definitely try that. Now I made some pickled. Oh, I wanted to show this. My uh, next class is called the plant-based picnic box. And so I made this yesterday and the plant-based picnic box is just something you could take with you or you could serve this like a charcuterie board. 
something that is all plant-based, no oil. It has everything from like two kinds of hummus, black bean dip, and I made a spinach artichoke and um, cream cheese dip with white beans and a little Kite Hill cream cheese, which is no oil. And it turned out great. I baked it in the oven. It was like a bubbly, creamy artichoke spinach dip. I made um, cauliflower flatbread, gluten-free. So anyway, this is my next class in April. But one of the things I made was pickled onions. And I uh, soaked the onions in apple cider vinegar. And they taste really good. Yeah, that that's way. exactly what I do. I just happen to use a little bit of California balsamic yeah. with, with either apple cider or rice vinegar, mm-hmm. just because a little less pungent. But yes, it's absolutely delicious. And then I also, the other recipe in that class is uh, I made these really delicious um, fresh apple scones. So these scones are made with whole wheat flour and fresh apple slices. And I've never tried to make scones before that were, you know, not the regular kind. And they turned out so good. They're they're not very sweet that I made them with 100% date syrup and dates and date sugar. So I did not use any kind of sugar other than dates. And usually in my baked goods, I would always, you know, use some kind of, you know, maple syrup, sugar, turbinado sugar. So I'm trying to switch over to using only dates. And these actually tasted really good. Well, you're not very sweet. I've been doing dates only or fruit only for almost, it'll be 20 years next year. And I'm actually, my new book is about that. Mm -hmm. It's all desserts, 160 recipes of dates Mm -hmm. and things like Mm -hmm. that. I like that. I'm really leaning that way myself because, you know, it's sugar is very addictive and it's really hard to live and eat this way if you're always craving that taste of the sugar. So I don't think I'm doing anyone any favors by making a lot of stuff that has different forms of sugar in it, even if it's less than what I used to use or, you know, a different form of it. I'm finding that I'm sweetening my still cut oatmeal with banana slices and just a little bit of chopped up dates. And I'm finding that it's very pleasant where before I would have had to add something to make it sweeter. So, uh, you know, if, I'm trying to encourage that too, as well now going forward. So that's, those are things that are happening to me over my transition is I'm trying to keep the weight off, which I have been able to do. I walk five miles most every day, work out at the gym two hours a week. And um, this year I'll be 68. Nice. So, you know, I'm in the best health of my life. I'm, I don't have any health problems. My cholesterol is low compared to how it used to be. My blood pressure problems are gone. And I feel great. I have so much energy that, you know, I, I go all day. And sometimes people will ask me, like I did some kind of, you know, 14 hour day last Saturday for my class. And the next day I got up and met my friend and walked five miles. And my friend said, oh, I bet you're exhausted. And I looked at her and I said, no, I feel pretty good. It was really kind of funny because even the day of my all day long class and everything, I didn't really feel that tired. So I think, you know, over time, oh, the puppies are up. Over yeah, Diane, time, to see the puppies if they're available. Puppy? Okay. Yep. Come on, Jiro. Okay, I'm going to bring the baby first. He's the young one. This is Jiro, J-I-R-O. It's a Japanese name. And Taro was my other puppy who died. Um, Taro and Jiro were the two dogs that survived being left in the Antarctic region for six months when the Japanese explorers had to leave because of some kind of uh, disaster. And they thought all the dogs would be dead. And when they came back, two were alive and their names were Taro and Jiro. And I always wanted to have a dog named Jiro. So this is my baby. Adorable. I love that you kept the ears the way they should. Yes, the natural ears are the way they're supposed to be. And then my other one, this is my baby Kami, Kamiko, Kameko. And she's six months old. Her name means child of tortoise in Japanese. And if you look at her coat, it looks like a tortoise shell. And so anyway, that's her name, Kameko. We call her Kami, all the different things. But she is, I love her to death. I love both of them. But Do they love each other? Do the two love? Finally. So we got the puppy uh, the beginning of February. And up until about a week ago, we didn't let the puppy 
and Kameko play together because she was too rough. You know, a, a four month old dog and a two month old dog is a big difference. And at four months old, she was real rowdy and rambunctious and she would just try to play hard with him. And he was like, Ooh, you know, a baby. So we kind of kept them on their own leashes in the house. And then about a week ago, we started letting them play together. And now they're like best buddies. They run the yard all day and they play and they have fun and they're doing great. But we had to be patient for, let's see, it was about six weeks of every day keeping them apart, but letting them see each other, but they couldn't like play together, but it paid off and they're doing great. Oh, I'm so glad. Well, thank you. They are, they're just precious. Thank this you. was a wonderful presentation. Oh, thank you so thank much. You, AJ. I just love having you on and thank you for coming into the date world with me because I've oh. been <laughs> teach that for 20 years that you, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, you can have all the decadent. I mean, if you saw the show on Friday night, when I had Dr. Deal and mm-hmm. Dr. Peace on, I mean, I was, I made German chocolate cake, mm-hmm. mint chocolate mousse tort. I've been using nothing but dates for 20 years. And mm-hmm. I was able to have a job at a regular restaurant as a pastry chef. Nobody mm-hmm. knows. I mean, dates are incredible incredibly sweet yeah they really are and I I didn't I don't think I really liked the taste of them up until the last year or so it was like my taste buds were so oriented towards sugar that when I would eat dates I would think oh I don't like the taste of this no no and I just had kind of a negative attitude but then I started using date syrup in my tea you know like a little squirt instead of Truvia Stevia you know, and so I thought, well, I'll just start using it in my tea. And then the funny thing that happened was I got really used to the taste of it that way. So daily use of it made me start to enjoy it. So now I use a small amount in my herbal, I I drink an herbal chai tea every day and I love the taste of it, but I put a little squeeze of date syrup in my tea and I just think that tastes wonderful. And I'm I'm off all the, the stevia that I was, I used to go through tons of those little packets. I carry them with me everywhere and sweeten everything with them. And, you know, once you start using those, it really dulls your taste buds for a taste of natural sweetened fruit. And the same thing is true with the food that we eat. And I tell this to the people that I work with and my classes that as long as you're eating regular food, standard American diet food or whatever you want to call it, you can't really enjoy our food. Like, you know, this is not going to taste like in Texas, we have Whataburger. You know, that's our famous burger place. Um, in California, you have what is the in and out Burger, you know, this is not going to taste like that. And um, if you think that our food is going to taste the same as the other standard American diet food, it's going to be disappointing. And as long as you're eating that food, then this food is also not going to taste that good. But once you quit eating the other food and you just eat this food, then this tastes incredible. So that is the thing to look forward to is dates, date sweetened desserts like my, you know, delicious apple scones aren't very sweet. But if you're not eating sweetened food that's sweetened with sugar, these will taste really good. And so will things like this burger salad or the burger on an oil-free piece of bread. If you really want to have bread with your burger, the way I do it is I just have it open faced. So I'll toast one piece of Dave's bread, put it on the bottom, and then I'll cut it and eat it like that. And that kind of gives you the, well, you had a burger if you're really craving that. So, you know, have it however you like it, just have it and see what you think of it. I hope you enjoy it. Yeah. And uh, Jay says, how does one sign up for your classes? Okay, well, my everything that I have now, I have it on my website. It's chef-julia.com. And there is a section where you can hit shop. And every class that I've done the past couple of years are 37 classes that you can buy a recording of, along with a detailed recipe packet. Or the current classes are just on my website under classes. So I think the next several are listed there. And it's just under Chef Julia classes. And then you can... You can enroll online all the way through on my website. Um, So yeah, anything I do, my private coaching is on there under services. I have a 12 week program starting on Monday or on April 4th. And I have one opening left. I only take four people. So I have three people committed. I have one opening left. So if you're interested in that, send me an email. And that's it. Uh, Facebook, it's under Chef Julia. And my YouTube channel, I really love for people to watch my YouTube videos because 
that is what I really enjoy doing. I love coming in here and cooking food, sharing with people, cooking skills. It's very low tech. There's not a lot of flashy stuff. It's just me here in my kitchen out here saying, okay, I'm going to make this food today. And um, I get a lot of people telling me that they like that because they want to learn how to cook and they want to see the process from start to finish. So that's kind of my way of doing things. I'm, I'm in the, you know, the older generation, I guess. I like to do things that are not super quick. Like, you know, TikTok is not my, is not my thing. I've, I've done some TikTok videos and they're okay, but, you know, I'm, I'm more about the process. So, you know, follow me in any of those areas. Instagram, I'm on there as Julia Dunaway. And uh, my support group, it's called Chef Julia Support Group on Facebook. You have to request to join. I think it's up to 5,500 people now. And what I do is I post what I eat in a day every single day. And I have since May the 18th of 2020, with a few exceptions when I've been, you know, um, sick or out of town a couple of days. But normally every day I post everything I eat every day and my exercise on this support group. And I ask people that want to do what I'm doing to join a 21 day challenge with me. And I start them up every 21 days. And what that does for people is it kind of helps get them oriented toward the whole food, plant-based, no oil eating, because they're saying, okay, I'm going to do it for 21 days and really focus on it and embrace it and get into it. And then if I see how I feel at the end of 21 days and I feel better, I've lost a little weight if I need to, I've figured out how to make the meals, then I can keep doing it. And so after doing this for the last couple of years, I have so many people giving me feedback now that they're on their fifth or sixth 21 day challenge and they're feeling really good and they're sharing what they do with our group as well. So it's a very positive, fun group. Nobody criticizes anybody. And people are very kind about offering helpful suggestions and just tips about how to live this way. So I welcome people to join the support group if, if you're interested. That is fabulous. Thank you so much. And I will, you didn't give me your links to your social media, but I, I'll look for them and I'll, I'll add them. Oh, okay. Later. Sorry about that. No, no, that's okay. It's just that what you gave me, you know, we were limited on YouTube to 5,000 characters mm -hmm. and it was already okay. over that, but I'll, I'll, I'll tweak some things okay. and I'll find I'm easy it. to find. <laughs> right. But, but do you prefer people follow you on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or all of the above? I'll get all of the links. All of them. <laughs> Okay. You know, some, there's something for everybody, you know, like, like you, Chef AJ, not everybody does Facebook. So they might be more likely to look at YouTube. So whatever, whatever you, you know, is your preferred way of following me. I try, that's why I try to do a little bit of everything because that way, you know, a lot of people I know are, are not that social media savvy. So I try to make it easy for them to find me and follow me. Great. Well, thank you so much. This was a wonderful okay. presentation. And I hope you'll come back soon. Yes, Chef AJ, thank you so much for having me. Have a great thank rest you. of your day. Thank you. It's my pleasure. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back at 4 p.m. Pacific time instead of five, because tonight are the Academy Awards, where I will continue with day six of my free Dinner with Chef AJ series, where each night I make four to five recipes from the book. And tonight I'll have a special guest and we'll be making nutrient-rich black bean soup, but we're going to show you how to do it in an instant pot instead of the old-fashioned way. Pico de gallo salsa, which is a great topping for the soup. Apple pie hearts, we're going to be doing the reduced fat version, and a creamy salsa. Western ranch dressing. And speaking of ranch dressing, my guest on the show tomorrow, Monday, March 28th at 11 a.m. Pacific time is Dr. Nikki Davis. And she is going to be comparing many of the famous ranch dressing, vegan ranch dressing recipes from YouTube and what we call the best vegan ranch dressing show.